pork burnt my cheek. Okay, <laughs> pork is ready. We recently did a call out on Twitter and asked all you lovely folks about dishes that you don't think would pair well with mayonnaise. And let me tell you, you guys are freaking crazy. Here are some of the suggestions that you guys put up. Um, some of these combinations are absolutely nuts, but we thought it'd be a cool challenge to actually make these happen. So the first one we got is a banana and mayonnaise combination which on paper sounds absolutely disgusting. Something wrong with you. But if you actually think about it, there is a usage of mayonnaise that makes a lot of sense and that's in cakes. Because when you look at mayonnaise, it's literally mostly just emulsified eggs and some sort of oil. So that would then by de facto, kind of not replace, but bring so much benefit into a cake to make it nice and moist while you're cooking it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of like a banana bread using mayonnaise. All right, three bananas go into our bowl. You can use overripe bananas. This is one of the greatest recipes when you have a lot of overripe bananas at home. Mash all these up. Once that's properly mashed up into kind of like a chunky paste, this is exactly what you're looking for. This we mix with, drum roll please, one half cup of mayonnaise. Everyone behind the camera right now is freaking out. They're like, that doesn't sound right. But trust me, it'll work. Put that into the bananas. Mix all that together. One whole egg. Little sprinkling of salt. We're going in with 3 fourth cups of sugar. That's just for drama. No one needs to do that. Mix all that together. Finally, one and one half cup of flour. Into that, about a teaspoon of baking soda. And then finally, some chopped pecans. So I got about half a cup here. These can be chopped up really coarsely. Quickly oil up one mold and then dump the mixture inside. This goes into the oven for about 60 to 75 minutes at around 350 Fahrenheit. After 60 minutes, banana cake is ready. Dum dum dum. That looks beautiful. I'm actually gonna try a piece for myself. So the number one thing you're kind of not looking for in here particularly is the full flavor of mayonnaise, but you're still looking for that savoriness. Usually when I bake, I always add a little bit of salt. So I think that mayonnaise will kind of like make that flavor come out. That's so surprising. Like you really don't taste it, but it's so moist and tasty. This is a winner guys. If you haven't tried this, you should try this. Today we're working with Hellman's Mayonnaise. I am a huge mayo fan. Um, a lot of people aren't, but I think I wanna convert people on what proper mayonnaise tastes like. This is the number one best-selling mayonnaise in the whole world, and it's made with high quality, real ingredients. And if you use it in different variations, or even just as a dip or a spread, it's delicious. What's great about it is that it gives you kind of like this unique melt-in-mouth, creamy texture that pairs perfectly with all your family's favorite dishes. The next recipe that I found quite interesting was the combination of adobo and mayonnaise. If you add mayonnaise to adobo sauce, I think that's really weird. Um, so the way I'm gonna do it is, I'm gonna do kind of like a classic pork belly adobo um, by marinating the pork belly first, and then I'm gonna deep fry that pork belly. So I've got some pork belly here, chop those up into manageable pieces, place that into a bowl. That gets mixed with about one half cup of soy sauce and a bucket load of garlic. Mix all that together. This will hang out for about one hour. Moving on. Uh, next recipe that people talked about was mungo. 
Um, this actually kind of makes sense to me. You want your mongo to be nice and creamy, um, nice and flavorful, extremely savory, and these are all things that I think the mayonnaise will really complement nicely. So um, last night what we did, we grabbed some mongo and uh, we basically soaked it for about 12 hours. I like doing that with mongo. It just brings out like a really nice nutty flavor and the texture doesn't get too, um, you know, sometimes you get mongo that's a little too soft. And for me, that happens when you boil it straight. This way you're basically rehydrating the beans a little bit before cooking it. So that's more or less cooked. So now we need to bring the flavor to the mongo, right? Because mongo, as I said, has a nice nutty flavor, um, but then you really need to add more stuff to it to make it interesting. So I got some pork belly, which I'm gonna thinly slice. I'm gonna render that fat in a pan with a little bit of oil. And then while that's going, we're gonna prep the vegetables that we need for the mungo. So I like making my mungo with a little bit of tomatoes. And then I have some garlic, some red onions. Once you've got beautiful color on the pork, super simple, we're gonna start adding some aromatics in there. So I've got some red onions, about four tablespoons of garlic, the more the better, in my opinion. And I go with the tomatoes. I'm gonna start seasoning it a little bit by adding some fish sauce and some black pepper. Next step, we've got a little bit of chicken stock and I'm gonna let that boil for about, on a simmer rather, for about five to 10 minutes. That already tastes so wonderful. So this is where we're gonna add our mayonnaise. And I'm adding it at this point so that before adding the mungo, I can make sure that absolutely everything is properly mixed. It's the first time I try this recipe, guys, so. Let's see what happens. When you think about it, it's not necessarily a very strange combination. Um, as a lot of you know, I actually lived in Russia for about two years and then they have this soup called borscht, which is basically a beetroot soup. Um, and the main condiment of that soup is mayonnaise. So basically it's a beetroot soup and then they take like this massive tablespoon of mayonnaise and they put it inside. And it really does give it just like a perfectly creamy texture. Let's try that. I'm not gonna lie, that's good, man. That's proper. All right, so we're gonna add in our mungo, tablespoon by tablespoon, just to kind of decide how much we actually need. I've had very dry mungo, like I've had very liquid mungo. So again, it comes down to personal preference. So this I'm gonna let simmer for about 10 minutes until it just thickens up slightly. While this is finishing up, very quick last recipe. I got some chicken thighs and some chicken breasts cut up into little pieces. We're gonna make kind of like a tempura fried chicken in terms of the batter that we're gonna use. Um, so this might seem strange to a lot of people, but it actually really works. I've tried this on shrimp and it's amazing. So I'm gonna use the mayonnaise here as a binder for the um, actual coating or dough that we're gonna put with the chicken. So mayonnaise, a little bit of flour, mix that together, one egg, you're looking for something that's not too, um, too combined or too smooth. Like if you have little clumps of flour, totally cool. We're gonna add some, where is my soda water? Super cold soda water. This will keep everything really fluffy. And you're looking for something that's slightly thicker than um, pancake batter. So I'm gonna adjust that by adding a little bit of salt and a bit more flour. That's kind of what we're looking for here. So this should cling on to the chicken perfectly. That, and take the rest of the flour, put it with my chicken. You can use cornstarch to do this as well. So you kind of have like that first base coat. Super simple, all we're gonna do now is take piece by pieces of the chicken, dredge it into our little flour mixture here, remove that excess and then gently make it swim in some hot oil. Our blender out. Kimchi goes into the blender. Sesame oil. Tad bit of salt. Mayonnaise. And then a little bit of gochujang. Blend all that together. That's good to go. Even if it's a little chunky, that's fine. 
keep this to the side. We're now gonna take our chicken out for a bit. Let that rest for about five minutes and then we're gonna refry it. After resting, just refry it slowly. This will just make it extra crispy. You'll see that the color changed absolutely immediately and it's much crunchier now. Last little step for the chicken. A little bit of butter into my pan here. Our kimchi mayo goes in. Just to really flash cook it. And then we're gonna go in with the chicken. Just make sure you kind of toss the sauce all over because that's really what makes a dish. Our chicken should be perfect. That looks so gorgeous. And then we're just gonna to top it off with some scallions. And that is good to go. Mungo is ready. Look at that creamy, beautiful, that proper color that you want. The mungo beans are still kind of nice and plump together and they're not all squashed up, which is really important. Chicharron, obviously very important with mungo. Let's try out this chicken. Look at this, I'm gonna grab this small piece here. Perfectly kind of cooked. The sauce really absorbed into the dough. Mm. Super moist, that kimchi mayo just perfectly coats it. The dough is nice and fluffy. Now it's a winter dish. A little bit of rice and you're good to go. Next we have our beautiful looking mungo. Mix that all up. Nice and chunky the way I like it. Really flavorful. The mayonnaise is just slightly there, but it just really kind of helps the whole savory and creaminess of the dish. And that pork just combines everything. Mm. This for me is probably the most surprising one of them all. Banana bread, perfectly cooked and moist. This is so shocking. Like, I tell you guys all the time that it's good and you can only just believe me unless you try the recipes. But honestly, believe me. Like, this is such a winning recipe. Adobo is very simple. After marinating for about an hour, I placed it in a pot, um, covered it with some water, added the sauce back in. Before doing all that, you're browning the pork belly a little bit on the pan just to give it a nice color. We're then gonna simmer it for about 30 to 40 minutes until the pork belly gets nice and soft. Then you add in a little bit of vinegar. I use about four tablespoons because for this, I don't want it to be too acidic. A Little bit of bay leaves. Simmer it for another 20 minutes and then once everything's nice and tender, we're good to go. So that brings us to right now. So I'm gonna separate the pork belly and the sauce. I'm gonna reduce the sauce a little further just to get it nice and thick. And then once our oil is hot, we're gonna start deep frying the pork belly. If you look at the pork belly, perfectly layered, got that nice color on it. Honestly, at this point, you can eat it. Who doesn't love soft pork fat? But let's take it one step further. So we're gonna deep fry this here. Next step, this is the one I'm not too sure about. The remaining thickened adobo sauce into a blender. To that, I'm going to add some raw garlic, because honestly, vampires. And then some mayo. So this is gonna be like an adobo aioli thing going on. Let's see if it works. Pork burnt my oh, mother Okay, pork is ready. Let's transfer that. You got my cheek. So you got a little bit of crisp on it. I don't want to get it too crispy because at the end of the day, I still want it to kind of feel like an adobo. Let's try this. Nice little dip. Cover it in that sauce. <laughs> oh, wow. That actually really works. That's tasty. You guys should try this for sure. There you have it, four really easy recipes using mayonnaise in a very particular and interesting way. All of them absolutely worked. My two favorites, the banana bread and the mungo. 
actually they're all my favorites. They're all really good. Um, so thanks to everyone who sent in your recommendation or your crazy ideas. I really love grabbing those and trying to come up with something that actually works. That was really fun. So thanks again for watching. Really appreciate it. Peace out.